Um, my name is Sharon Diorio. I work for Europro. We make the Shark vacuums and Ninja Kitchen products. Nobody's ever heard of us unless I say that. Um, I work in internal applications doing uh, business intelligence analytics, and that means if you go to the website and it doesn't work, it's not me. Uh, I'm also the chief instigator of the Angular JS Boston group. Um, we've been around about a year, and I've ignored it for the past month in favor of this. And uh, <laughs> I am the chief groupie of the boy band known as Mishko and the com and company. <laughs> so I was newly hired, and my boss listened to me whine about having to do coding in PHP and CanJS, which was a decent framework. And he allowed me the opportunity to go and look at some new frameworks. So I'm ignoring my slides here. The landscape was very different then. If you were around, you were looking at, you know, what are my options? The, the yellow line is backbone. That's what everybody was talking about. Blue line down there is Angular. So I went and I looked at Backbone, and I didn't like it. And I looked at Ember, and I didn't like it. And I looked at, ang um, looked at Angular. And in two hours, I wrote code that looked a lot like this. Now, I was a JavaScript newbie, so this was a big deal, especially when I brought it in to the boss and showed him what it did. Now those of us who have been doing this for a while, it's not that impressive because we've all done filters. It's like the first thing that you start playing with, that and data binding. That If you've ever done uh, a talk on intro to Angular, you'll impress people who haven't seen it with stuff like this. Still, I walked into the office the next day and I was like, look at what I did. And the boss was pretty impressed. And it looks like we made, excuse me, the right decision. And I think you guys can all relax because you all made the right decision too. So, whoops, sorry. I was pretty sure it was magic the way it worked. And I went looking for Angular comics and there's not a ton of them yet and I'm sure that will have really made it when there's some Angular comics making fun of us. Things I won't be covering, if you haven't used any of those by now, you should. Go read the docs. So, a custom string filter. I'm putting this up here for one reason, and that is that, um, let me ask a question. How many of you came to JavaScript because of Angular, like you were a traditional, a couple people. How many people have used another framework and kind of sidled in? Okay, so you, you guys can just ignore me for a second. Something I noticed in the questions that are coming up on IRC and Stack Overflow are not really questions about the framework. They're questions about how JavaScript works. And something as simple as a function can return a function was hard for me to wrap my head around because I was a object-oriented programmer. So even that one thing helped everything click into place because that's everything Angular does is it returns, a, you know, a function returns a function, everything. So forgive me for that little aside. So the next filter that you'll run into is the filter filter. Y'all spent a lot of time naming that one. <laughs> I, I call it the yep, nope filter, but that is already taken too, so really all this filter does is takes it, as it loops through with ng repeat, it takes each item of the array, passes it in, evaluates it against code that you're giving it, and then passes back, yep, nope. And then based on that, limits the result set that gets displayed. That's all it does. But just that one little thing, of course this is the same as the one I I did then, but you can you know, limit it on anything, which is a beautiful thing. So a custom array filter, this is a little filter that I built on checkboxes, and what I am doing with this is I'm taking the data, same data set, 
and the custom array filter will take the entire array in, iterate through it, and return the entire array out. You can use that for limiting the data set, or you can use it for data transformation. That's the part I get excited about, because I didn't like doing data transformations and services. It didn't feel right. You know, I think services are for where data coming in, data coming out. Even though the, the double click team showed some cool stuff about you know, extending that functionality to do it there, I like doing it in filters because they're even more modular. I can use a filter in a controller. I can use a filter in a directive. In this case, I'm using it to create a simple checkbox filter. I'm removing nulls. I'll have all this code. You won't have to follow it really much. But essentially, this is, this is the meat of it. I'm looping through, removing the nulls, returning the items. And in this case, I cheated a little bit. And I'm returning uh, a double object. It's, it's got a list in it, and it's got an, uh, an object. Because I wanted to use it twice in the code here. Because one is the list that's building my list here dynamically, because I wanted to use the same data set. It might be an expensive call to go get that data. So I'll use it twice to create, dynamically create the checkboxes, and then I'll use it again for the simple, this is another, I could have put this in a module, but I just put it in the controller. Because that all it does, again, evaluates, yep, nope, return. Oh, so I didn't even show you that it works, right? Spend all this time on demos and then you don't even show them. But. Filters are the easiest thing in the world to test. If you're not testing right now, I'm not even going to ask because I always was embarrassed when they asked before and I would be like, mm, kind of. Um, we're testing everything now, right? They're the easiest thing in the world to test. There is absolutely no excuse not to test a filter because the test is literally garbage in, expect garbage out. That's it. So it is the most modular piece of stuff to test. And I totally ripped off this little snippet from the phone gap filters. And so one of the coolest things about filters is that you can chain them. Coming in from other languages, it's usually a common uh, paradigm to pipe stuff. So you can line them up as long as you want. You can, you can sort, you can uh, filter, you can change the format of it, you can order. Um, however, you have to pay attention to the order that you're putting the filters in because it's a pipe. So in this case, I'm doing this, the limit to before I'm doing the filter. So I'm starting with 20 results. Then I'm deciding which one of them I'm going to show. So at the end, I'll have like a much shorter. I won't have 20 results to show it's not. And you, you will make that mistake frequently. I make it pretty much every time I do filters. Versus always do the limit two at the end. Simple as that. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time on this subject because it's usually the first thing that people start asking about when you tell them that you can take all of your data and put it in the browser. Because people start whining, Ugh, how much data can I put? And the answer is a lot. This is really performance stuff. So I actually asked a friend of mine for a data set and she does some research with malware she does the DNS entries for malware and tracking them that way. She gave me a great data set for this. And it's no big deal to have 300. I'm, whoops, sorry. We've all done 300 or so. It's very performant, it's quick, you can sort it, you can filter it. What if you have 3,000? So, US. Still, still very quick, right? about 30,000. Now the status, when that was running, that's actually the call. So the status doesn't get changed back to done until the data is returned. Everything after that is the filter building, the checkboxes. And then at this point, let me pick US because I don't have a lot. Well, where is US? 
it's still very, that's 30,000 records in memory. Big deal. At this point, we're going to get pretty much the whole data set. I think there's just a shade over 300,000 records in there. This is how long it's actually just taking to get the data. And this is running locally on my machine with Mongo and a REST interface. So we've got all these records. Now, it's a little bit more sluggish, but not heinously so. It's still quicker than going out, especially if you're dealing with an API that you don't have much control over. There's the latency involved. And you can still, each time it's running through, every time, and checking each one for yep, nope, 300,000 records. I think, that, I think that's worth a, a round of applause right there. So if nothing else, I want you guys to stop being afraid of putting the stuff in the scope. It's there. The only time I have, and I, when I was building these demos, of course I killed the browser more than once. But the only time I killed the browser is when I tried building DOM elements based on those record sets. The DOM elements are way heavier. So don't worry too much about the stuff that's in memory, in, in the background. It'll be fast. JavaScript, this is what JavaScript does. But when you get it into the DOM, then you have to think through how much am I going to display so you don't overwhelm the user. And that's where filters make your life easier anyway, right? So when wouldn't you use filters? Don't do DOM manipulation in them. I think you hear that about everything, right? Directives, directives, all right, I got it, directives. Accessing data, don't do it in the filter. You can pass the filter into the service, you can pass the filter into the controller, but don't do it in the fil filter. If querying your data is quick, do it there. Um, some, a lot of you maybe have control over that. Actually, at, at my job, we were afraid and we built all of our filtering on the server side. If you're using unstable functions, it makes for an ugly filter, it makes for an untestable filter. So, sorry. If you're restricting access to information, and I bring this one up because I've seen questions on Stack Overflow on this and people are, you know, they're, they're like dumping everything into the browser and using permissions to decide what to display to users. Don't do it. If it's in the browser, it's there. They don't have to be that smart to go into DevTools and view the data there. And then I wanted to spend a little bit of time on this last one. Because, again, the part that I got excited about with filters was the data transformation part. You can't always control what your data looks like. What do you do? Well, in the past, I'd write this big chunk of code in the controller that took this data and went through it and built a new structure for it and whatever. But now I'm realizing that, especially as I start playing around with D3, I need my data to look a certain way because D3 is picky as hell. And the filter was the way to get there. So the friend that gave me the data set I started doing some work for her, and that's why I wanted to show this. And of course, I got my link off the page here. Hang on. So again, this is 300,000 records. So the, the longest amount of time here is gonna be going to get the 300,000 records. But then after that, it is filtering on to cow and then displaying that. It's still it's still pretty ugly. But how long does it take to go through those 300,000 records and pull out a different aspect?
And that is pretty much, I'm actually done a little early and I apologize for that, but, but this is it. And I will, of course, post all the code. The code right now that's generating this particular um, graph is kind of ugly right now. And I plan on making it a little better because I would like to make some sets of filters and directives that we can use with D3. And I'm open to help on that, by the way. So thank you very much. That was it.